let's look at integration suite going hybrid. Hi, I'm Ian Thane. Welcome to another SAP Code Talk. And I'm really pleased to have three interviewees today uh, with me. I have Shilpa, Tripad, and Holger. Thank you, everybody, for joining me. As we know Shilpa, I hope you don't mind, Shilpa, I'm going to pause and jump over you to, to the other two. Uh, if uh, we, Maybe, Shripad, can you give our audience a quick introduction to yourself? Sure, thanks, Ian. I'm Shripad, and I'm working with SAP for 21 years now. Uh, I started uh, mostly in the technology area, starting from UI technologies uh, back in the day, NetViva at that point in time. And then I played the role of uh, chief architect for enterprise services repository, ESR, probably the BI, PO colleagues would know. And then now uh, acting as a chief architect for integration suite and cloud integration. That's Perfect. me. Perfect. Thank you very much. And Holger, could you give an introduction to yourself? Sure. Thanks, Ian, and welcome, everyone. I'm Holger Meinert. Since I started in SAP in 1994, I have held uh, various architects position in applications such as Marketing Cloud in the office of the CTO and in SAP technology, uh, for example, with Exchange Infrastructure, which later then became Process Integration. It was back in 1999, actually, a long time ago. Currently, I'm working as a chief architect for the SAP integration suite with internal and external stakeholders um, on integration strategy and solution architecture. Excellent. As I said right at the start, I jumped over uh, uh, to uh, away from Shilpa, but Shilpa, I'm going to come to you for our first question, if I may. Why do our customers need hybrid integration platform? Yeah, very good question, Jan, and thanks for this. So in the last few years, our customers' landscape have become real, really heterogeneous, hybrid, and huge. It comprises of both SAP and non-SAP applications for their lead to cash, source to pay, hire to retire, and design to operate scenarios. So they have all sort of deployments in the cloud, on hyperscalers, public cloud, SAP managed cloud, and on-premise. And of course, there is integration with business partners, uh, networks, and governments, right? So to manage all these integrations, or in short, we can say integrate anything anywhere, a hybrid integration suite is a must for them. In particular, for ground to ground integrations without having to go through cloud. So yeah, that's why the hybrid integration suite is really very important for our customers. Excellent, thanks for setting that for us, Shilpa. Really appreciate that. I'll go to you, Holger, next, if I may. What does SAP do to enable hybrid SAP integration suite? Well, um, to enable the hybrid integration suite, we invest, uh, first of all, into the next generation integration runtime called as Neuron, which will then run on Kubernetes or the Kima environment of the SAP business technology platform. This next generation runtime will support modern API and event-based integrations, orchestration management with high throughput and performance. And at the same time, it will have a very low footprint and will support pervasive uh, deployment in cloud and hyperscalers or even in customer environments, private cloud or on-premise. And then last but not least, we will enable a seamless transition to Neuron so that customers can consume this innovation without any disruption. Okay, so what's the value add for this flexible deployment? Well, thanks, Ian. That's a pretty good question again. Um, there are four main use cases which demonstrate the value of Neuron Edge, um, our on-premise deployment. The first use case is hybrid operations. Installation, update, and system monitoring is done by customers on their premises. But on the other hand, design, configuration, and message monitoring is handled in integration studio in the cloud. The second use case is integration flows can be executed on premise in Neuron Edge and customers can add their API policies. Existing iFlows will, of course, continue to work on Neuron due to design compatibility. Then the third use case is API-led integrations. Design, implement, discover, and manage APIs, expose legacy interfaces, modern APIs, or execute API policies and mediations on premise. And finally, the last use case is that we will enable a slim event bridge, which will uh, enable customers to expose business events 
from SAP on-premise application either to event mesh in the cloud or to third-party event brokers in customer environments without having to go through cloud. Excellent, thank you for that. Um, Shripad, when you introduced yourself, you told us of your long technical excellence. So I'm gonna to come to you for the technical uh, explanation behind this. Thank you for that. And it's always a good idea to look at what's happening behind the scenes. And with respect to the hybrid um, the integration platform, if you look at it, the foundation was late when we moved uh, our platform from Neo to Cloud Foundry, right? A couple of years ago. That was really the starting point because we did not just move it uh, from a technology perspective, but we also used the opportunity to lay a strong foundation towards hybrid enablement. And this meant that we broke our platform into multiple microservices. So we embraced the microservice architecture there where each of these microservices are uh, loosely coupled. Yeah? One of these microservices being the runtime, which is the most important microservice as far as the cloud integration consists of, and having such a loosely coupled microservices means that we can now allow our customers to have a central cloud-based design time, monitoring, and all these aspects while deciding where to run their integrations, because we fully understand that customers, depending upon their business needs and data security and many other considerations, would like to run their integrations either on the cloud, which is completely managed by SAP, which we will continue to offer, by the way, but also may decide to run some of their integrations on their premise um, for ground to grind uh, efficiency, data privacy, and many other reasons, right? Like Holga explained already before. And such a microservices based architecture loosely coupled will enable us to achieve this goal. And this means that we uh, containerize our runtime, which is basically dockerize it. We make the prerequisites very low, such that the TCO for our customers is quite low. We make the uh, uh, prerequisites industry standard, like Kubernetes, for example, so that the customers don't have to learn something proprietary. Yeah, and then can really choose to now run their integrations either SAP managed on cloud or then take the runtime, deploy it on their premise and execute their integrations on the ground, right? And that's in essence what we do with the hybrid integration platform, uh, Ian. Okay, Thank you. So, oh, that's fine, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, so how can it help our process integration and process orchestration customers in their migration path? Excellent question on that because the process integration Customers are one of our key target audience with respect to this evolution of the architecture, yeah. right? So for the uh, process integration PO customers, the path forward would be on two fronts, depending upon their business needs, right? Either they could then move their integrations um, into the cloud uh, directly, that could be one option. But then if their business demands, then they could also deploy their integrations on premise based on the, uh, the new generation neuron architecture as uh, Holger mentioned. So these will be the two path forward for them. And also to mention that while we do all these modernization and innovations, uh, we keep compatibility in mind and that's key for us, right? Which means that all the content the customers have uh, developed on cloud integration, all the content which SAP has created and shipped on cloud integration, they will all continue to run on the modern neuron-based runtime, as Volga mentioned. And that's that's very key, which customers can rely on us. What we also understand is um, the customers require a migration path forward on how they can really uh, come onto this journey. And this we fully understand, and we are committed to provide them a um, meaningful migration path. Uh, the technical details of, of how exactly we will enable this to them is under discussion, and we will talk about it in the future. Excellent. That's good. That's a good answer because it's a bit like Fight Club. You know, we, we don't talk, like to talk too much about futures on, on Code Talk, but uh, no, this has been a really great Code Talk. While you've been talking, Shripad, I've been seeing, and uh, our viewers would not be able to see, Shilpa nodding, Holger nodding, so it's, it's all uh, a great message. Uh, I really thank you all, of, uh, all for joining me on Code Talk today. Uh, and as that that way forward becomes a little bit more uh, of a foundation. I think I'm going to have you all back again in the future. So thank you all, Shilpa, 
Tripad, Holger, thank you for joining me on Code Talk today. Thank you.